The Creatives with AI Podcast. The spiritual home of creatives curious about AI and its role in their future. You're listening to With AI FM. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Creatives with AI. I'm your host, Lena Robinson. And today we're talking to a really good friend of mine, somebody I've known for, I was trying to work it out the other day, it's probably about 15 years, I guess. Um, this is Bernie J. Mitchell. Hello, Bernie. Hi. Hello, folks. Yeah. <laughs> I think Tony Blair was still Prime Minister when we met. I think so. We actually met, interesting, so I always tell a little story of how we met. So we met on Twitter, actually, didn't we? And then we met up in person, in IRL, or in real life, as the young people say. And through you, I've had lots of really important relationships set up and connections that you've made. Bernie Mitchell is one of the most connected people I know and an amazing connector. But today, we're going to be talking about him, and I'm having a bit of a brain fog day today, so I'm going to be looking at my notes. Um, Creator writer, podcaster, and coach. Um, it'll be really interesting to have a chat to you about some of the areas you like to talk about today, like the creator economy. But I know you're also very heavily into the co-working space and community building and so forth. So tell us a little bit about, in a very short Cliff Notes version, a little bit about your background and sort of what brings you to talk about with, with AI and creativity with us today. Ooh, um, so like I, I grew up in hotel and catering. People like to call it hospitality nowadays, but it's catering. And and then I worked for a staffing agency, an event staffing agency, and I was the only person in the whole building that knew what the internet was. And I, I think this was about 2005. They said, we need to get one of those website things, which is still pretty late to the game. <laughs> and that's how I accidentally got into marketing and then I got into, and then all these things started happening. Like, I feel like I've been involved in a lot of waves, like social media happening, podcasting happening, the sharing economy, um, and, and co-working when it really kicked off. I got into that in, I first heard about that in 2008. And my first place in a co-working space in London was in 2010. And I was in a group, which you might remember, called Kindred, ran by Alex Butler, who was part of the whole Tech City thing. And we got to, it was a freelancer group that met in a co-working space, a different co-working space every day. So I got to meet, every time some, back back in those days, every time someone opened a co-working space in London, Alex Butler would say, can I turn up with a bunch of freelancers? So I got to know pretty much everyone who ran a co-working space in London, which is how I sort of appear to be amazingly connected. And through that, um, I got to meet, like you said, I just got to meet a lot of people, all those, you know, silicon drinkabouts and all that stuff happening around Old Street. And then I stumbled into, I'm sure we'll get to it in more detail later, um, Kofi and Urban MBA. And I'd heard about AI and then Kofi's like, you know, way ahead of the whole, he's talking about, we're all talking about AI and he's talking about quantum computers. So that's how I got into AI. I wouldn't say I'm into AI, but that's how I got introduced to AI. (laughs) True. It's interesting because as part of that co-working environment, like you and I have shared a co-working space, the hub, uh, when it was in Houston. It's called the hub, wasn't it? Anyway. Um, Work hubs. That's it. We always had, uh, coming in, you, you always had groups of, you would have couple of hour, hours in a morning or an afternoon of writers coming in and sitting and, and collaborating and also doing stuff themselves and art artists coming in and drawing and painting and doing whatever and planning and doing their business. So you've always had that sort of creator, creative thing going on. What would be really interesting to have a chat to you about today, and it might bring in that point around the creator economy, is and it's a question we tend to ask everybody is how how is AI impacting your creative approach and the industry you're in from a creative perspective? Like what's how's that impacting you? How's that impacting your creativity and your business? Amazingly. Um so very early on, I think 
probably like 2013 I started using Grammarly and I'm like massively dyslexic. So I had a, I had a real, I really, every time I put, I love writing and every time I put something on the internet, I like would panic about how it would look. Um, and then Grammarly really helped that. And so I don't, know, I don't want to be a bit insincere to say I've been using AI for 15 years, but I've been using tools that are influenced by AI and I'm not really, sh- it must have something to do with AI. Um, so Grammarly massively helped, uh, my ability to like write, uh, write with confidence. Cause I could already write, but going through with like Google docs or Microsoft word just wasn't, you know, it was harder work. Um, so it checking my work was really, really useful. And then if you shoot to nowadays, um, when I want to write, write a blog post, I go and talk to chat GTP. I spend a lot of time walking around fleshing out ideas and one of the things i'm sure i'm not the first person to say this on this podcast is you know ai is not going to take your job it's people who know how to use ai will take your job and i had you know through those groups you said i just know a lot of freelancers and there were two groups of freelancers when chat gtp came out and they were one lot were like oh it's over and they were like you know jumping out of buildings because their life was over, like the stock exchange has just crashed. And there are another lot going, oh my God, now it's going to really start. And I'm in that group because it's just, you know, I see, I see people, I think a lot of people listening to this will see people online who have gone to an AI engine and said, write me a blog post about AI in HR. And they've just copied and pasted it. And you go, You can just tell nowadays, even if you don't know what AI is, you can tell there's, and then there's people who already know what they're talking about and it just speeds up that process. So imagine I'm going to accuse you of being a bit like me. You'll have an idea and then you sort of walk around. But then if I go and, you know, I I find talking to people about an idea is how I flesh it out. And now I spend time talking to chat GTP and, and then it just, fleshes out those early stages so i'm a very very good editor so if i if someone gives me something and says oh what do you think of this i can't help myself but edit it so i get that messy messy first draft quicker and then i edit it i like that the messy first draft it is it is something that a recurring thing that seems to be coming up with my guests is this almost um collaborative approach with AI like it's not they don't use it to cut out themselves or to replace themselves they're using it in conjunction with so is that kind of how you're seeing it absolutely it's and and the I mean I'm still absolutely working it out but I I will give it I mean a slightly more interesting sorry fun thing is I love cooking and I'm a better cook since chat GTP came along. Cause I will go to yeah. my fridge and I'll go, hello. I'll go to my fridge and say, I've got a lemon, half an avocado, three chilies, a slice of cheese. Um, I know some salami and we have pasta and I just walk around talking the list into thingy. And then I'll say to it, um, there's three people in our house, my wife and my son, and we're following a healthy diet um we we want to follow the blue zone diet we live in vigo in galicia and give it all these details and say what what are the portions we should have because we really give it loads of details and then it will come out with stuff i'm like i would know how to do that but i don't want to give the brain i haven't got the brain power to work out what to eat for dinner tonight and we eat like kings because it you know i spent years working as a chef so i know how to cook but i haven't got the brain power to look through Jamie Oliver cookbooks and not a and, you know, and we're actually, and it's taken six months, but we're spending more time with our cookbooks than we ever have because we started doing that with chat GTP and we remember things. So that, is, and there's all these other uses that like every, I saw in um, oh, whoever it was, someone on LinkedIn um, said they were talking about how they get things done in their company. And someone would come and say, like their their first, and they're, they're, this makes them sound horrible. Actually, as I'm thinking about it, they say, "Have you? What? Oh, I don't know how to do this. Have you asked Chat GTP?" And most things you could just go, "Oh, how do I do this in Canva?" Or you know, who's the who was the 30 second president of the United States? Or whatever you want to know. If you ask it, it's done in a few seconds. Yeah. 
Mm. Whereas if you go, should we have a meeting about this? We need some creative ideas. But the first, that messy first draft, which is actually Anne Handley's thing, not mine, but um, oh, I'd yeah. love for everyone to think it was. Um, you can get that messy first draft done in seconds in chat GTP. Um, yesterday we were having, I had a, I don't know, like our clients said they wanted to use one word for something and I thought they should use another word for something. And I got all like reactive. And then I went to chat GTP and said, Oh, should we use tomato or tomato? And can you make a case for both? And it, it, that hot. And then I copied and pasted it into the thing, edited it. So that whole thing took five minutes and it made my case very, it made both cases very fairly. And at the end I said, cause both, both tomato and tomato would have worked in this instance. I said, I like this one, but this is why I think we should use my one. And then, and then they looked at it logically, but I would have written a hot email, would have run, run around all day getting, well, they don't know what it's like. They, you know, I, they just don't understand it. Like I do. If only they knew what I would and all being all dramatic, (laughs) but I, all about it. It it really was. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, one of those five minutes, it was actually under five minutes. I walked from here into our bedroom, looked out the window, came back and sent it. Like that's the time saving, but also the brain space saving is extraordinary, isn't it? Like for me, Mm. one of the things I use it for all the time is, you know, I'm, I consider myself a reasonably creative an intelligent thinker but some days like today where I've had a a a bad sleep apnea night and my brain's not working particularly well I will use my own tools that I've got but I'll I'll throw things into chat GPT and go I really need your help on this particular thing um and it's saving me time it's saving saving me brain space which on a day like today I have no brain space at all um and struggle you know so I think that brain space thing, and I'd imagine particularly around things like your dyslexia and your ADHD, the impact on your life must be huge, I'm imagining. It's, it's, I cannot, like to say it's been life-changing is, you know, I've, got, I've done more work since ChatGTP came out, which is like two years, I've lost track, but yeah, you know, I've done more work than I want to since it came out um than i'd probably done in the last decade and and that's not a throwaway comment you know we the rhythm we do produce two podcast episodes every week um you know right right much better um our youtube channels like the, the videos I do, the videos i do every day are a result of being able to use ai because bef- there's so much stuff every so often a photo pops up from like 2012 and I'm like oh remember those good old days and it's only what's it 12 years ago but it's like oh my god like to to produce podcasts to make videos to write online to publish like even even the workflow through google docs and things like that would have been you know a weeks and teams of people and a big part of that is the is the creativity thing because i you know I'd have to go and sit in a sit in a cafe in King's Cross with my best moldy skin notebook and wait for the muse to come. And now I'm like sitting in the kitchen waiting for the kettle to boil and go like, would this be a good idea? You know, and it just so there's a lot of things that pop in my head and I ask them really ask it really quickly and I'll decide in, you know, under a minute whether we're gonna go and do that. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's taking so many roadblocks out of the way, isn't it? You know? Um, and are you um, are you talking into it? Because they, I'm, I've only used the typing any version. Can you talk into it as well? You, you can talk really into stupid. it, but I found that. <laughs> I, no, I, I, it, I know it's just had an update, but that doesn't seem to work as good for me. So I actually use the dictation thing on my iPhone, and and then, and then I can go and edit it back and stuff like that. I just found walking around. I don't know whether it's whether my I don't know what's going on, but. Um, I, I dictate into the Apple thing in the chat window and then send that. Um, the other thing that oh, it's popped into my head and it's just gone. So we'll just carry on. <laughs> it will come back. 
and it'll pop back in again. Yeah. So you're using the apple portion to do the cutting down of your idea into a format that then can be put into chat GPT. Is that kind of the flow for you? Yeah, like I'll, 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 I'll pick it up. I'll press the, I'm going to do it. So I'll just, I'll just press the Apple microphone at the bottom of the keyboard and I'll, I'll talk into it and then press send. Um, and I know I, I have another, I have other things where you can talk. I can't remember the name of it, but but I can talk into it and I know it can do it, but it's just that for me is much more efficient. Um, yeah. Trip of, tip, and, tip of the day. That can be tip of the day. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, look, obviously it's impacting your life quite a lot at the moment. And obviously it's something that you're aware of. So, and I'm just going to turn my page, everybody. Sorry, I'm looking at my notes. Um, I was going to ask you about, examples and specifically in the sort of more creative end of the uh, of the world and spectrum um have you got examples in your mind of where you've seen ai being used at its most brilliant in the world of sort of creative and creativity art music film whatever um, put you on the spot now <laughs> I'm going to, I haven't because I, I kind of made this deliberate choice because I love getting lost and navel gazing and overthinking it. And, um, one of the things I picked up from urban MBA when I was like sitting in the room with the urban MBA students, um, and urban MBA is a youth charity. It's a, it's when I say youth, it's like 16 to 30, um, mainly. And it runs a 12 week program. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah good old days um old days. and it, they run it they run a 12-week program and a 12-month program where people can come in with a business idea and go through the whole thing and a lot of what is taught in that is um is how to use ai and technology to whether you're there's people in there who run fashion brands who run food trucks who are graphic designers like everything in there um and there's a lot of like practicality of like, how's this going to, how does this actually affect my day to day? So there's a lot of examples right. we've already talked about here, like that actually, but getting into, you know, I, I see things, they, they whiz past on Instagram and YouTube, but I'm, I'm really interested in like, how can I apply this to my, my daily life now? Like what, what can I do with AI right here and right now? That's going to like save me time, speed me up, um, free up free up brain power and things like that um and i do see a lot of people sitting around you know and we've run it i've run events where people have philosophized about what ai can do when is skynet going to come and take us all and what will this you know so i am concerned about i i'm interested in like how this will affect the future of work because that's a big part of the whole co-working thing and yeah. there's and, th- and there's that whole debate around universal basic income and the impacts of and things like that but like I'm really interested in like what's going to happen in the next six months. So I ha- I'm sorry, I haven't got a, you know, David Byrne level AI example, but it, it is, it is, I, I see people, I see people doing things online, but nothing specifically sticks in my head. No, that's cool. There's no wrong answer to these questions. Um, the next question on the flip side then is, have you seen any examples of AI in this a world of creative being used absolutely horrendously. The bad, the gross, the horrible. I think, like, on, online I see people, they're either doing something they think is cool and it's not, and, you know, that's okay, or they're just lazy. So oh, there's, okay. there's, like, it must occur to you that that is a really bad video. So there's there's people who go in. You know, you know the people that used to love iStock photos yep. um, on their on their websites. Mm. And there's one there's one person in my industry, and you go to the <laughs> they go to their LinkedIn page. I, I go to their LinkedIn business page, and there's this video that if we'd seen it in 2008, we would have gone, "Oh, that's really cool." You know, there's like helicopter shots in there, but it's but it's like, and the voice is like. 
Welcome to Lena Robinson Associates. We work with a range of people pr- providing a service that's specific to our clients' needs. And it's like, you, either, you must have got your 12-year-old nephew to make that on their iPhone and you just didn't check it before they put it up. Or oh, likely the 12-year-old probably beat her, to be honest. <laughs> and you, you are, I mean, I put some, I'm, I'm always like testing and experimenting. So you will definitely find some like mediocre efforts from me online if you go back far enough but it must occur to you that that is a really that does more damage to your business and your brand having that immature ai video explainer video put up than you'd be better like sitting there in your underpants explaining your business than you would having that free ai automation video up there yeah It brings up an interesting point, again, something that's come up in some of the other conversations I've had with creatives and and artists and so forth, is the difference between the truly creative output and the ones where you sit there and go, oh, that's jarring, is the artist itself, so or the creative person themselves. Like the quality of the creative mind versus... The average Joe Blow that's not particularly creative is going, oh, look me, I've made some art or I've made a film or whatever. The difference is that vision that the creative person has in the first place and where they want it to to go and and end up. Um, Tom Morley, who I'm interviewing uh, next week, actually, he, uh, you know Tom, I think, the, the he's mm-hmm. the scratchy politi guy. He um, always talks about the, to me anyway, he's talked about it, is that it's the art of knowing when to stop because of the vision that you have in your head. And I think I think that kind of leads to what you're talking about, is that people just keep pushing buttons is not the same as somebody that understands where, how, what to prompt and where to, when to stop because the vision that's in their head is the difference. Would you agree? I, I do. Like the, I've never heard it said like that, but that is that is really accurate. Um, right. and as you were saying that, I remember when I first got into WordPress and I go into the work, the plugin thing and I'd be like, Oh, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And then, and then I go to, we, you know, we had London bloggers meet up back then. I'd be like, Oh, I've got all these plugins. And I remember I'm Christopher, I think his name was saying, you were just killing your website with all those plugins. Like, when are you ever going to need it to do that? When are you ever going to need to like, you know, post to the empire state building in London, you know, or what, I don't know what that means, but so so it took them all off and it is you know so many things are less is more and mm. um just because you just because you can do it doesn't mean you you should and the other thing that popped into my mind as you were saying that is the do you know the ira glass thing the gap is is a video link in the show notes folks so ira glass from this american life has this two minute kind of explain a video that is I don't know, 14 years old now and still looks better than that guy with his AI video. And it <laughs> it says there's a gap there's a gap between your ability and your taste. So when you start out doing a, a podcast, drawing, writing, you know, everything like that, you know, you know that it, you know, you know that it could be Ernest Hemingway or Maya Angelou, and you're just trying to make it sound like that. And something like all the all the you know meetups we run about blogging, YouTube, podcasting, and everything like that. The the one thing that the one thing that um, me and Andy Barger used to make this podcast, which was we talked to all these bloggers and authors and stuff like that, and we said, "What's your one tip?" And it got a bit boring because everybody would say, "Just do it," you know, "Just write stuff." And <laughs> after you've written really a, tip, a thousand, it? you know, so but but it, it was like just it, it, but it was it was like. What if there's one thing you could tell people, it's like, just get on with it. You know, like if you want to write a blog, get a website, stick words online. And then, uh, and then after you've done a hundred videos, a hundred podcasts and a hundred, I don't know, blogs or whatever it is, then you'll, then you'll know where you are. And in podcasting, so many, this, the stat is going around for years. So many people don't get past 20 episodes and in the, really? I can't remember who it was, but yeah, it's, it's like someone, someone, I think it was Alex Mor- 
Rosie, what his name is, um, the gym guy, said, to be in the top 10% of podcasts in the world, you just need to get to 30 episodes because so many people start and never go beyond there. And, mm. but then there's this line, you know, I've done, I, I, in, I don't know, since 2011 was my first podcast and I've produced or hosted over a thousand podcasts and somewhere, I, I don't know where the point was. I thought, actually, you know, I know what I'm doing now. And I didn't really know what I was doing to like podcast number 700. And the same with that um, 750 words thing. I've been writing in that every day. Well, not every day, sorry. I've been writing in that a lot of days since um, about the same time, actually. So I'm about to pass the 2 million word line. And when I started out writing 750 words on a daily basis, it would feel like it would feel like doing a marathon. And now I sit down and just know, you know, my I've configured my brain to sit down and say, you know, quite often I'll sit down and go like, I don't know what I'm going to write today. You know, I come and sit here every day. What's the point of this? And then I'll sort of flip off into, and I was thinking about doing this podcast with Evening today and how AI has affected my creativity over the last decade. And, and, and you kind of prime the pump, but you have yeah. to, it, I hate gym analogies, but you know, it's like when you go to the gym the first time, it's like, Oh God, this is going to, you know, it's, it's, it's better to saw my leg off than come and do this. <laughs> and then somewhere you wake up naturally and go in there and you've, you've run for an hour and have noticed it. Yep. So with AI then, sorry, bringing us back on track, not that that wasn't interesting, but with AI then, do you think that is going to uh, help influence that whole process for creatives do you think or make it go faster or impact it at all it 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 will make it go faster it will it will and it it, like right now it's making it go faster because i can i can work out how i'm going to do things and even tiny little things like when i get stuck with something on my computer instead of going to apple support and training through the forums i'll just say where's the you know i'm using I'm using QuickTime on my Apple computer. Where do I find this button? And it will just go. So then the yeah. the roadblock of, you know, how do I, how do I, uh, one, one thing I had is um, I was making videos in landscape and uh, my friend Martin, who is really good at YouTube said, you should make them in the vertical one. So then I had all these videos and I couldn't work out, I'm like, what do I do? Huh? And I just asked chat GTP, where do I do this? Cause I was like trailing through so many video apps and everything like that. And it, and it told me how to do it. And wow, you can just do it in the Apple photos app. But I was looking for software that is, you know, $30 a month. And, and I just, I just was able to get on with it. So now I'm making more videos instead of working out how to use the software. That's cool. That's and, very cool. Yeah. No, so it's removing cool. it's it's removing roadblocks, and then when you, I mean, and uh, thing things like let me use this example because it's it's quite practical. Um, so I send a lot of emails and write a lot of content, write a lot of YouTube things, YouTube titles and headlines and subject lines, and I. I would take ages doing that. You know, there's like things like co-schedule headliner analyzer, which was always, which was great, but it was always a bit, you know, not, it was a bit inhumane. And now I will make, you know, a podcast or a video. I have a, an AI tool that I put the transcript into. Like, like to, to post a podcast nowadays, Emily, we record it, Emily edits it. And then I do the show notes and all that stuff. And if we sat down, I could probably record an epic. We could probably get it done in two hours. I would record it, send the, send the thing to her. She, she knows how to, Emily's my business partner. She knows how to edit. She's, I've never worked out how to edit. She knows how to edit. She'll send it back to me. We do it all in our project tool and I'll get the transcript, put it into happy scribe, take it, drop it in a chat GTP. I've got a prompt there that says exactly what we want the notes to say, but that prompt is in the old, is in chat GTP 3.5 or it's one of the plugins. So then I'll take it out of there, put it into the modern one, which is knows how Bernie talks and 
And sometimes I have to remind it, what are the 200 phrases we don't like to use? Like it likes to say foster, collaborative, innovate, you know, all these words that are just deep dive. Um, Reaching Take out. all of them out. Yeah. Reaching <laughs> out, yeah. And, and then... And then I just know what I'm doing. So I just edit it out and I'll read the beginning. And it's like, you know, it loves to say like, today we sit down with Lena Robinson to deep dive into AI and innovative solutions for a collaborative, innovative community. And like, that just sounds so, Neff. you know, fostering is a word it loves. So, you know, we changed the Where language. Where got that from? Some famous person's obviously saying it a lot. <laughs> it, it, loves, it loves the word fostering. And I can, you can just, and people use words like innovative, collaborative, fostering communities so much on co-working space websites. I'm going um, to shoot one fostering that, into that, the that, title. <laughs> but, but, the, but then we, sorry, I lost track there. But then, then we get to the headline and I'll yeah. say something, you know, headlines are like, as you, as you well know, like so important. You know, if people, if you have a crap headline, people won't read the rest of it. Yeah. So I'll say, you know, the, the thing I like at the moment is like, can you look at this? And I don't know whatever I've said to it, but the point I make is, can you give me a headline that promises what the content of our conversation actually delivers? And it will yeah. take like three goes and you'll get to something really, really cool because there's, I was um, working with, I was did a podcast with Stacey Shepard who runs a small co-working space in Totnes. And it's a, it's, um, a co-working space for female entrepreneurs in Totnes. And it's just like, you know, beacon of amazingness. And it, it kept on saying women founders, which is, you know, that it is for women founders, but like that's such a, you know, as clunky. It doesn't say what she does. Yeah, it's clunky. Every mm. time you every time you go to anything to do with, you know, business or tech, there's something about women founders, which is really important. But that's not what she's about. She's about, you know, impact particularly empowering See, that's what ChatGP would empowering parents. Um, <laughs> mothers come to her, come to her place to get their work done, run their businesses, and then it's, it's built around. You know, I'm I'm a mum. I have a little bit of time when my kids are at school. I have I can't be dealing with loads of existential overhead. I want to come in here, be with parents, bitch about my partner, bitch about my kids, be a safe <laughs> space, get my work done. And leave and feel inspired, yeah. and and that's the, that's what she does with people. It's a, I think what's interesting about that, to your point, is it does. I have to run it through sometimes when I'm doing stuff like that a couple of times and give it different problems, and it is about the art of the prompt because eventually it gets there, but without the human, it would have just been a really shite, and the headlines are just like the it's bland for some reason. Is that because? Oh, I'm going to say something really controversial here. Is that because most of us write a bit blandly, like a bit blah? <laughs> I don't write blandly, you know. Oh, well, um, I don't either because I swear too much. But um, <laughs> to it, be bland, but it's it's it's, it's everything. The, it's the like, effort you it? want to put in. Yeah. It, it, it it's the it's the effort you want to put in, and the you know I've been uh, I've put, I've read like every book I'm writing, but, but part of that creator right club has been sitting around with other human beings talking about writing and you know we'll read like Anne Lamont and Stephen King's on writing and you know Seth Godin books and stuff and talk about them and and that's that's that human interaction talk talking about the work and the writing is really really important and being bothered to make words count there's another great book by a guy called josh burnoff which is writing without bullshit and he says his iron imperative is that the reader's time is more valuable than your own so books when you're writing AI, the links, by the way link in the show notes folks yeah so if you're if you're writing stuff on um you know like linkedin is where i spend a lot of time and that's not very creative but you know if you write stuff on linkedin which is like copy and paste in chat oh you know it's it's you're wasting people's time and and people flick through and there's there's putting in a hook to get people's attention and there's putting in a hook which then create then has text in there that's actually worth reading and when you've done it enough times you know whether it's worth reading or not yeah 
No, that that's that's true. Um, yeah, the hook. I think that's really important because I think it's not just the hook to get pull somebody in because that can be clickbaity. And I, in fact, one of the things I got ChatGPT to do recently is I, I'd written a headline. It was it was almost there, but my instinct was going. It's not quite right. I said, make this punchy, but whatever you do, do not make this clickbaity. And that was really interesting seeing what it had come out with initially and then what it came out with when I said, please make this eye-catching and and captivating, but not clickbaity. It knew exactly what I meant and it got it right. Um, Because, again, I was having one of those days where my creativity was not at its optimum. So that was really helpful. yeah, interesting. So, but, but we've then, talked, oh, sorry, sorry. Go on. no, no, you go. Go on. Like with with the like the whole, you know, a, a never ending part is the um the whole creator economy conversation, and mm. and I first got into that via a website called copyblogger dot com in like must be like two thousand and ten, and there's and because there was there was all the co-working freelancering thing going on there. And now I think if you, if you walk around going, I'm a freelancer, that is, I mean, I, which I've done nearly, you know, all my life, I used to be a freelance event manager and then as a free, you know, freelancer is a bit like I'm, you know, I'm, which is exactly what I've done for years. And I'm sitting in a co-working space and hoping something will happen. And freelancers in co-working spaces sit around and most of their business comes off the people near us. So when when you know you and I were in work hubs, if someone said to me, "Do you know anyone that does video?" I'd look over opposite and go, "Martha." So Martha yeah. got lots of jobs. Yeah. I mean, she's very cool, but she got lots of jobs because she was the closest. She was like a meter away from me, and was the videographer. And you know, Miro was sitting behind me. Anything to do with real estate, he got that. Yeah. And marketing. So there's that ecosystem there. Yeah, and. Sorry, I forgot about you. There's, I would say, like, um, innovative, innovative brand development. I would go to you. Um, but in that, in that, so, but a lot of the time, you are, you know, I, as a freelancer, I was like working for other people, and when you're in that creator space, you are creating something. And there's something I was listening to you today. It's like fifty five percent. This is this is from 2020 because I, I don't like shouting out facts without thinking. In, in 2020, 55 percent of the U.S. population were freelancers, and then a percentage of those would be creators. So they're making their own business. They're making their own, you know, they're, they're making a course. They're making food. They're making videos. They're like they're owning what they're created, and because mm. because 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 the way you know employment and the job market is changing so rapidly being a member of the creator community is is really really important um and and that there's something something to do with that languaging because you know i'm a freelancer is like i'm hoping someone will hire me to write and i'm a creator like i'm i'm edging i'm i'm an independent economic agent which is what brian from um copy blogger used to say and having tools like chat gtp means you can be more self-reliant on on your creativity and i think no i think you know just like tons of stuff i've read is not you know it used to be like i've got a million followers on instagram and that was really cool and everything but like how creative you are and working that creative muscle in you know even in 2024 let alone where we, we get to 2030 and being prepared to put the effort in to not come up with cooler ideas but just be better to be to to it's like i hate using the gym analogy but like if you go to the gym every day you'll be really strong and healthy and if you eat avocados and not you know frosties you will just you will just be better at it and you need to do that with your brain and have you know chat gtp is like the machine you use in the gym to get that done well, i'm sure there's holes yeah. in that premise there no, but, no, but i understand the analogy that, that's what i'm thinking yeah, it's the it's the AI as a tool again, which is what keeps coming up over and over again. <clears throat> You've nicely segued into let's have a little bit of a look into into the future. Um, if we're looking sort of three to five years out, what 
do you think the impact of AI is going to be having on the the creator economy? You know, and how do you anticipate both yourself and people that are creative in the creative community are going to have to adjust to make changes? I am. I'm going to give. I might, this might be a really disappointing. This would be a great answer or a really disappointing answer. Is like I am. <laughs> I really am just. After after spending so much time reading about where everything is going for the last ten years, I just made this decision with AI that I'm I'm just looking six months ahead at the most, and how is what I do going to help? You know, there's all the communities I'm part of and I run. How is using AI going to help further what we want to be doing then? So, like, and a lot of that is around how can we? Like one of the things we're working on at the moment is there's a big co-working event um, where every, every in the end of May 2025 is a thing called European Co-working Day, where there'll be an open doors co-working um, day in as many co-working spaces as possible around Europe. And saying to people, you have to run an open doors day for co-working is, yeah, we can do that anyway. You know, we can run an event, but then like, what is the point of doing that? And then how can we make better videos, better podcast interviews, better stuff online, better better content all round that conveys that message so people go, oh, I don't need to just the day before say we're doing an event. It's like how can taking part in that whole journey and activity help us be more connected as co-working space owners? I'm, I'm focused on London, more, more focused on co-working space owners connecting in London, making that there's 8 million people in London and about 1,300 co-working spaces. And half of those co-working spaces are always going, we need more customers. So there's a massive disconnect. It's not like there's a shortage of people in London that need a space to open their laptop and connect with like-minded people. Um, I don't know what the stat is for how many freelancers and, you know, creators and independent economic agents there are in London, but that's the, that's the, (laughs) <laughs> that, that's the problem I want to solve you know well yeah. I did actually there's this because I mean that so you know there's like 300,000 economically active people in Waltham Forest and something like 70% of them are micro businesses so and, and then there's, 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 there's 300,000 yeah. economically active people in Waltham Forest which is a borough in London and seventy yeah. percent of those are self-employed, micro. Like they have ten or less employees, or they're freelancers, or they're you know registered as self-employed. Yeah, micro. Yeah. So I don't know what seventy percent. See, um, and there's and there's co-working spaces. There's probably about twenty-five co-working spaces in Waltham Forest nowadays, and they all need more customers. So what are those? What are the whatever that figure that seventy percent figure is? 21, Where are all yeah, those people looking? 210,000, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So 210,000 people are eligible for a, a space in a co work, and there's a massive disconnect. And some of that is obviously a marketing thing, but it's like, how can these spaces communicate them better? Because when people go to a co working space, people get more connected. And, and, you know, when trust is, when trust is very high in a community, everything speeds up in business and the way things get done and everything. And then crime goes down. So that's that's what I'm interested in. This is a very long-winded answer. Sorry. That's what I'm interested in using AI for. Whereas yeah. in my industry in co-working, people are always going, co-working business in 2040 will be worth a hundred billion 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 pounds. Like, you know, that doesn't that doesn't help me at all. Like, what yeah. am I supposed to do with that stat? And people would say that around the sharing economy. You know, when when we were running around doing all the sharing economy stuff 10 years ago. Every six months, someone would say, you know, predictions of the sharing economy worth, you know, whatever inflated figure it was. I'm like, that doesn't help me feed my family or pay my employees today, you know. Um, and it, there's a lot of, there's there's a lot, and I am do my fair share of navel gazing, but there's a lot of navel gazing and pontificating about AI. And like, there's, there's you know, we should spend more time and energy about where we are right now. And how we're going to solve all the many problems in society, like this week with, when I say AI, I mean, like, how can we communicate good ideas better using AI, not how can we go to Mars, you know? Yeah, I like that. I think 
to narrow down then on that future question is like what do you see needs to be done right now in the from an adjustment perspective in attitude and use and practical use of AI that is going to have to be done to make sure that the gap that you're trying to close in the next five you know three to five even ten years is happening so right now what needs to be adjusted to make sure they're we're hitting those goals it's it's um so one of the reasons i am madly in love with the urban mba thing you know i'm a trustee there so i'm going to be above average and enthusiastic but why i got really involved in it was because it just taught like you and me would have done really well in urban mba when we were when we were younger yeah and i have I went to university to be a teacher and I found out so much about education, but the education system, I didn't want to be a teacher. Mm. Um, I didn't want to be a personal assistant or, uh, you know, a secretary. I wanted to, I wanted, uh, you know, really like education. And I have so many friends who are teachers and I go, Oh, what are you doing about AI, uh, AI in your school? And I'm like, Oh, it's not really relevant. And I'm like, mate, like it is like, it's like saying we're not using the internet. Like, how can you, and my, um, my niece is at university and I keep on sending her things like, um, Google notebook. Like if I'd had Google notebook when I was at university, I would have been, you know, I, I was, I found out I was dyslexic at university and I had a dyslexic coach and I found out how to use a calendar online, you know, like a Microsoft or Google or whatever it was, you know, and it was life changing. And if I'd had, google notebook where i could chat with documents and it's not you know it's not not doing the work it's like finding out how to do the work Mm. and i cannot believe how many people are how many people in education are not paying attention to ai and and it's not oh we better know about ai because we then we'll know if people are just hashing together their essays it's like you need to be teaching people how to use this because you know that term prompt engineer is a really really important job if you you know the you know the story about the guy that comes in and turns a nut and charges 10 grand if you're a good prompt engineer you'll know how to write something it is absolutely possible to write a prompt in um chat gtp that saves you know thousands maybe even millions of pounds because you just yeah. tweak it in exactly the right way you know and that's yeah. the imagination being trained in, to use your imagination and creativity in order to like write the right thing that could, um, I'm sure there's somewhere, I don't want to be, I don't know, but like, you know, I'm sure there's somewhere you could write something that would correlate the right information at the right moment that would save lives. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine there is. It's an interesting um, point there about the prompt engineering. I think, because somebody brought it up a couple of episodes ago where, they actually use ChatGPT to create its prompts for ChatGPT. And I'm like, oh, what? Hang on a minute. Which is quite astounding. I, I thought that was just – sorry. I thought that was just what you did. Like, I, like we, we – there's a, there's a book we're going through at the moment, and if you put the whole – there's a client we're working for, and they're, they're rewriting their book for a different audience – I can't say who it is because it's like top secret, but like we're, we're rewriting their book for a different audience and we put that, and we never expected it to just, I want to be clear. We didn't expect to put the whole book into chat GTP and it spit it out, you know, this new fresh version and we go off to the publishers. But um, we, we, when you put the whole book in, it just like eats the whole thing and falls asleep. So you have to bridge it from chapter to chapter to chapter and and the first version, the first chapter it did was like amazing. We have to go and edit it and double check it and everything like that. But it's like, that's pretty good. But we knew how to describe, you know, it was like saying, oh, we want this chapter to be like a little bit of Beyonce with a bit of David Bowie and we'll chuck in some run DMC in there and give an edge off like as if Jamie Oliver was like finishing it off with some pesto sauce. And and well, that's not what we put in, but, you know, and it, and it, it gave out exactly that, you know. Yeah. Um, but... But then, and I had to ask someone who knows a lot about AI how to do this, and they sort of went, "Oh, mate, you're not cracking your eggs before you put them in the pan." You know, that's how you get a fried egg. I'm like, "Oh, sorry, I didn't know." <laughs> and they they explained 
how to how to just say to it if i was to give this to something else what would you what would i need to do so it was like it wrote it's so every chapter is writing its own prompt for the next chapter and referring back to it oh that's so um, cool it's, it's really interesting but i i get excited about like yeah. like it's it's ne- it's going to be never ending you know on how how can you get it to do things and that's another really good example because we were stuck on stuck on the book thing and luckily we know people around to like ask how you do this stuff and so we we unblocked and now we can get back to working on the words and you know is it there's three themes we need to incorporate into it and the theme the book was written before ai and before the pandemic so we have to like integrate personal references in there and chat gtp is not going to know the no. personal references from 2023 about you know pandemics and ai um so it still needs that human touch you know and and you know ai is the icing on the cake you have to turn up the ingredients i think uh, the, one of the learnings that i've had was um the power of using existing uh, tools, materials, and things that you've already created to then, as you say, do the next, either next version or the next thing or what have you. I'm with you because I've done some practicing where I've like, right, let's try this without anything and just ask it a question. And you read it and you go, oh, that's so off. It's not funny. Then you go, thank you, ChatGPT, for that. However, what changes if you add the audience profile and I'll have created an audience profile for something. What does that now change if I upload this and you understand that it's being written by, by Lena Robinson and here is her biography. What comes out then is extraordinary. So I've been doing a lot of utilizing um, existing methodologies and tools that I've created over the many decades that I've been working um, and I th- I'm finding that the combo of me and the, the chat GPT is taking things to another level. To your point, still having to edit, still having to craft some of the words because it's too, maybe a bit too acronymy or a bit too jargony, which I'm, you know, I try not to do. Um, yeah, that's a really interesting, interesting point about the bringing of the two together. Do you think that's how it's always going to be? I I think it will um, continue to evolve. I mean, so that's a really obvious thing to say. What a lazy answer! Sorry. It, <laughs> like I I am I am, <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm just astounded at how it changes all the time. Because I was I was really happy with. Um, I mean, I, I keep trying other engines, and one, one of the places I've learned the most about AI on is just I've been on um, AppSumo the platform for like years and years and years and just seeing tools evolve. So there's an AI tool I brought there, um, which I thought was amazing. And now, and when chat GTP four zero came out, that amazing tool that solved all our blog writing, SEO research problems feels like a, you know, Ford Cortina. Um, And it's, it's, it just changes so fast. So, Mm. I mean, I, I don't spend a lot of money, sorry, I don't spend a lot of time like reading about where it's all going and, you know, chips in our brain and everything like that. But, you know, if you like where, where, what it can do in six months will be compared to now is, you know, will be, I find there's a lot of things like, you know, when um, Steve Jobs launched the iPhone, you're like, I didn't know I needed that. You know, there's stuff, there's apps that you, if, if you, if I said to you, I can't think of an example at the top of my head, but if I said to you, you'll need a, you'll need an app for that in 2008, you would have gone, what are you talking about? And there's so many things you just cannot live without. Um, You did, you didn't know, you didn't know you needed it. Yeah. Um, And I think, and again, you know, like as responsible artists, creators, business people, you know, you, you need to like keep paying attention to this. Don't spend 12 hours a day researching it, but like, I found a, f- a handful of people that I, you know, I've read all their books. I've followed them for ages, um, and they, and I take my AI lead from them. And, and most of them are right talking about how to write much better content, and they're not, you know, trying to make something out of nothing. 
think or make nothing out of something. I know. Yeah, no. Got that wrong. <laughs> one of one of the things, the whole reason why David Brown, who is the original um, host on Creatives with AI, hi David. Uh, hi, he, David. the whole purpose of coming out with this particular um, podcast was to reduce the fear and to enable people to have a better understanding of things. And I think for, for me, that sort of constant curiosity, that constant wanting to improve what I can put out into the world is only going to be enhanced by AI. I'm I'm not personally afraid of it taking over and being me like, good luck with that. <laughs> For a start, I'm fucking quite weird and unique and odd, you know, peas in a pod, you and me on that one. Um, I think, I think for me, I think what's really important, and I hope you think the same, that reducing that fear, making it more accessible, which I think ChatGPT has done a beautiful job of doing, um, is kind of is kind of that future is here kind of thing, isn't it? It, it, it is here. When I see when I hear people, cause, I mean, because there's people are at different stages. If I went into the, um, I know butchery world and started following loads of stuff about butchery i'd be a beginner you know so but when, when there's people particularly on linkedin going you know the future of work is this it's like mate it's already happening like it's been around for like three years and you pretending that you've just discovered all this stuff is going on um one, one of the things we're going to do in the in the co-working assembly with kofi is run a a workshop where people who are community managers and run and own co-working spaces could come and sit around a table together and say, like, what are your what are your top ten things you do every week to probably market or communicate? Commu- I don't want to say marketing, but like communication around your business. And then we'll run a workshop on how to use AI to do that. Because some of those people come in and they're talking at such a high level about AI. And when when we, you know, at conferences, people talk about AI, but they're talking about AI at a real estate building, you know, spaceships and robots kind of level. And it's like, I run a co-working space in Beckenham in Kent. You know, I don't, I don't need to know that. It's not, it's not yeah. helping me sitting around listening to all that. Um, you know, there's all these things I don't do. And I'm listening to all this stuff that is not applicable to my day-to-day routine. How can I use Claude, Chat GPT, Gemini, use the features in Canva, use the features in HubSpot, use the features in, you know, Riverside to speed up, save time and make better stuff in my in my business. And yeah. it's very easy. It's, it's like it's like running a, a kebab shop in Ilford, but then always reading about, you know, Ottolenghi. You know, you're never gonna you're never gonna use you're never gonna sell spinach and blue cheese falafels in your kebab shop. Well, maybe you've actually, that's, that's probably that's, that's a better nice. example. Like, it, yeah, quite nice. I'm hungry now. <laughs> um, and it's, there's, I mean, there's, um, I think, you know, do you know Julius, the event guy? You've told me about him. Yeah. Julius, Julius Solaris, the event guy. Um, like last year he said, I, I go to events all the time. Everyone's talking about AI all the time. And I go to their stand and say, what is your AI thing? And they're like, oh, well, like, you know, we, we've got a window where it predicts your text. So really, you know, your event platform isn't built around, you know, solutions, remote first AI solutions, is it? It means like you can do that in Google. You, you, know, you can do that in Gmail. So you haven't got an AI solution. And, and no one, everyone's talking about it, but they're not doing it. You know, it's like teenagers are on heat you know they're all talking about sex but they're not actually you know doing anything about it <laughs> no true i'm sure well, there's better examples <laughs> i mean I- i've thoroughly enjoyed uh today's conversation we're nearing the end of our uh podcast which is a shame because i've really enjoyed it um one of the last questions i ask which i haven't uh let you know about um is we always ask our guests if they could recommend or if there was somebody that they would like to see on creatives with AI and it could be somebody famous or a mate or somebody that they've done business with that you think would make a really good guest on creatives with AI, 
who would that be? I think, I, and you know this person, I'm sure, is Gina Romero. Oh, Do you know who yes. I mean? Gina Romero. Because Gina, Gina um, runs a an agency in the Philippines. She used to be, ladies and gentlemen, she used to be, she used to be in London and Gina and I about 14 years ago used to run in events together. She used to run a, a, an IT support company. Her husband actually put me on um, Google apps as it was called then in like 2010 when I was getting very frustrated with my um, over bloated Microsoft. Back, back then I was so excited I could get email on my phone. It was that long ago. Um, and then she's, she, she went to the Philippines, set up this staffing agency because there were lots of – her mother used to be a cleaner in London, which is how she grew up in London. And um, she, there's all these people – there's all these Philip, mainly Filipino women going and working in hotels in San Francisco and London to feed their families. She go, why are you all doing that when you could just work on the internet? So she's taught a whole generation of people how to be virtual assistants, prompt engineers, and everything like this. Oh, it's a company cool. called Connected Women. And then she opened a whole thing um, in, in the pandemic. Everyone cut their costs. So a lot of um, virtual assistants lost their jobs because people made cutbacks in their companies. And then she had this whole, you know, loads of women who needed something else to do. AI really kicked off. So she has created all these jobs around AI for women in the Philippines. And she talks a lot about the dark side of people putting input in. She's very, very interesting. She's, she's super cool. And, um, that would be, I think the content she would come back, come up with would make mine look like a Ford Cortina, you know, <laughs> I quite like a Ford Cortina, poor Cortina. Um, I think that's really amazing. Gina and I are in contact, so I'll definitely reach out uh, to her. Oh God, I'm using that word. I'll definitely get in contact with her and, and have, and ask her if she'd and like to foster that on. collaborative content engine. Yeah. Yeah. The old tag tribers. We used to all be called tag drivers that Bernie used to run this event uh, group. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on. It's been absolutely wonderful. Um, Thank you to the listeners for listening to what Bernie and I have been chattering about today with regards to creativity and AI. And uh, we would like to wish everybody uh, a good good day, good afternoon, evening, and stay curious, everyone. Bye, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.